Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon again. I'm Henrietta Budai, the Gener uh, Secretary General of Hungary Green Building Council, and uh, I will moderate this uh, green talk today. Uh, this time, we don't, uh, don't have uh, our green talk even in Hungarian, but in English. And I would like to share uh, some technical information with you before we start and before I present our speakers uh, of today. So some uh, details. Uh, this green talk will last for one hour and we will have two presentations. Uh, each of them takes two, uh, 20 minutes. And after that, uh, the, the, the presentations, we will have time for questions and answers and discussions. And we can ask you that if you have any questions during the, the presentations, please uh, click on the Q&A button uh, in the bottom of your screen and you can type your questions in it. And if you have any technical uh, thing to share with us, please type in in the chat box. And it is very important that the event, event and the lectures will be recorded and can be seen uh, in the uh, YouTube channel of Hungary Green Building Council. And now let's talk about the event and the topic uh, of today. So today we will speak about uh, the net zero whole life carbon and uh, how uh, life cycle assessment can help uh, to reach net zero whole life carbon. There are a lot of terms in the title. What is net zero? What is whole life carbon? What is life cycle assessment? And our lecturers will explain all terms uh, during their presentations. Uh, and uh, now this, this is time uh, to uh, introduce our speakers. First of all, uh, I welcome Carolina Atocalio uh, from uh, OneClick SEA, and she will explain uh, how uh, to assess uh, the circularity of building through, through the life cycle assessment methodology. And then uh, we will have a Hungarian project and it will be presented by Leonard de Klerk, who is the owner of Irota Ecology. This is the, the first uh, carbon neutral uh, touristic uh, building and uh, three buildings, of course, uh, in, in Hungary. So I uh, let uh, uh, the word to Carolina to have his, her presentation. Thank you, Henrietta. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will be sharing my screen right now. So, yes. Let's talk a, bit, a little bit about circularity in buildings. So as Henrietta said, um, my name is Carolina Aitokalio. I'm a business developer at OneClick LCA. And we at OneClick LCA, we have the mission of powering the makers of a zero carbon future. So today, um, let's just break down a little bit um, my talk in the program. So I'm going to, at first, do a quick introduction to OneClick LCA. Then we're going to talk about the life cycle assessment process, what is building circularity, how to apply building circularity to buildings, and finally, uh, building circularity with the help of OneClick LCA, in which I will do a quick demo uh, with the software. So about OneClick LCA, we are the world's leading construction and manufacturing LCA software. We have solutions in, so, uh, in terms of software for buildings, infrastructure, manufacturing, corporate greenhouse gas reporting. Uh, we are present in over 130 countries worldwide. We have all the publicly available EPDs added to our database, making it the largest database in the world. We can integrate with other 15 different types of software, including um, Excel, Revit, Rhino, and others. We have today a staff of about 100 people and we are a Finnish company based here in Helsinki with over 20 years of existence. Uh, we are able to connect the entire industry because we offer solutions for the entire industry. So for example, manufacturers want to do the um, assessment on their products and issue environmental product declarations that will then be used and specified by architects and engineers bought and also used by builders, investors, and institutions, and also in those um, in, in their calculations as well. 
Uh, in OneClick LCA, we have solutions for each phase of the project. And we also need to have in mind that the uh, potential for decarbonization of the project halves as each stage of the pro project moves forward. So to sum up, we are a global platform with global data and tools for global compliance, also complying with uh, certifications as well. We make then carbon easier to understand and to act on with a very much uh, user-friendly tool that offers results, uh, both numerical results and uh, graphic results that can help your client's clients also understand um, carbon. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the life cycle assessment process. Why the life cycle assessment process is important? Because the construction segment is responsible for more or less 40% um, of the carbon emissions nowadays. And the global building stock will double in about 40 years. This means that we will be building in the next 40 years a New York City every month. The um, way to quantify this and to actually uh, take action in this matter is through uh, the life cycle assessment because it evaluates the whole um, life cycle as it has been said of this process in the construction industry and how the life cycle assessment works. So we have uh, different sources of embodied carbon across the construction uh, process and life cycle. So for example, we have the A1 to A3 stage in which we consider the extraction of raw material transport to manufacturing facility and the manufacturing process. Then we have the A4 to A5, which is the transport from the manufacturers to the construction site and then installation. Then we have the B phase, which is all about the use stage. And here we have all, everything in terms of use, maintenance, repair, replacement and refurbishment. And lastly, we have the end of life stage, which uh, considers the deconstruction, demolition, transport, waste processing and disposal. The end of life stage comes uh, usually after 50, 60 years, depending of um, the regulations that we are doing our calcula calculations based off. And it's the uh, final stage of the building after the use. However, we have some more uh, stages that we need to uh, take into consideration if we are going to be working with um, European norm standards. So, uh, for example, in the B stage, we have the operational energy and water use, and we also have the D module that talks about benefits and loads beyond the system boundary. So, in terms of life cycle um, assessment, this is how it is done with this breakdown of stages. And in terms of whole life carbon, the difference of whole life carbon is that it considers other impact categories uh, beyond just um, carbon and biogenic carbon. So it considers also acidification, eutrophication, uh, ozone depletion and others. So uh, what is building circularity? Building circularity is a way to measure the circularity of a building and a, const a construction of a building. So um, there is no norm in place for building circularity at the moment, but there are principles and metrics and some of the most well-known and used are from the UK GBC, HQE Economie Circulaire from France, the London Plan and Circularity uh, Statement and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation Circularity Indicators, which are very much um, intertwined. So for these principles and metrics, what they consider are only the manufacturing stage and the end of life of the products of this building. So uh, also in terms of certifications, BREAM also considers credits um, for the circularity assessment. And within uh, this consideration also, we need to think about a few other elements, for example, the design in buildings. So is the design made for assembly, disassembly? Is it made for adaptability, flexibility, longevity? And um, also the reuse potential and the impact of the materials. And also if the, we are designing out of waste, for example, using recycled materials. And now just a quick question before we explain um, 
how the breakdown is made in terms of the impacts for uh, beauty circularity. At the end of life, we have two different types of um, materials, the materials that are downcycled and the materials that can be used for energy. So how do you think those materials are accounted for in terms of circularity, for circularity purposes? Do you think materials that are downcycled and used for energy are fully accounted for, are only accounted for in 50% or are not accounted for at all? Let's give you some time to uh, give your opinion and vote. Okay, so I guess uh, we have uh, here the majority of you, 46% uh, think that it's 50% accounted for. And you are correct, it is 50% accounted for. Let's have a look at how the circularity principles are used for circularity purposes. So we have here at the top of our circularity assessment, the materials recovered, in which we can find all the materials that are used in the construction of the building. So here we have virgin materials, renewable materials, recycled materials, and reused materials. And for circularity purposes, virgin materials are not considered at all, but all the other materials are fully considered. So the sum of materials recovered here is 4.1% from the renewable, recycled, and reused materials. On, uh, at the bottom, on the other hand, we have the materials returned, which are materials that um, come from the uh, deconstruction process of the building after the um, life cycle has happened with the building. So here we have the use as material, which is fully accounted because it's a material that is used as uh, the same quality, same type of material. Then we have recycled materials. Uh, they are also fully accounted for. We have downcycling and uses energy materials that are uh, accounted for in 50%, as you guys now know. And uh, the disposal materials that are not accounted at all. Uh, so the sum of those materials are the materials return and our circularity score is uh, the calculation of the average between the materials returned and the materials recovered. So how do we apply building circularity to buildings? We have some principles that we can work with. For example, we can combine it with other uh, life cycle assessment or life cycle costing uh, calculations. We have to be aware of the weighting principles, which are uh, mass based, and um, the calculations are mass based, and the weighting principles are the ones that we just discussed about at the moment, the last slide, sorry. And we have to also understand the scope of the calculation that considers all the materials in the period given, including site wastage replacements and end of life. And what does it cover? So it covers the red, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle principle, value preservation, design for adaptability, and design for disassembly practices. The users uh, of one click LCA that use this tool, uh, the building circularity, what do they need to know to do this assessment? Basically, the materials and their quantities, and also refine from the default values, uh, the percentage of reused or recycled materials, the shares of waste, and also if they are um, made for design for disassembly and adaptability, if that's the case. The calculation percentage, uh, once again, is 100% uh, linear, taking into consideration the weighting principles. Um, so, in terms of the uh, software and how to work with it, we have here, the first column is the resources column. So here we are having a, a look at the foundations and substructure um, part of the building. So in the resource column, we have the materials, then we have the quantities uh, and the quantity types. We can add any comments that might help us with this assessment. Uh, we also need to share to, sorry, uh, do the input of the share of recycled, renewable, and reused percentage. 
according to the materials, the wastage as well, and also confirm if they are um, going to be used for design for assembly and design for adaptability, as well as choose our process for the end of life. Then uh, in terms of results, we can have results for uh, materials recovered and materials returned, not only in the graphs, but also in numeric terms. So here we see them in tons. And also we can see the material group, the key material groups. So the materials that are the most responsible uh, for uh, the circularity score and how so. So for example, here we have concrete with a very high uh, amount in the downcycling and use it for energy, uses energy. And now let's have a look at how to work with building circularity with the help of one click LCA. Um, so here I have a project in which we have our levels lifecycle carbon tool and we have our building circularity tool. We have two projects, the baseline and the proposed design. And we can also compare them down here, the two projects. So if I click here on my circularity score from the building circularity, I can see the data input tabs. So the building materials, the circularity weighting factors and the calculation period. In the building materials, we will see um, what I just showed. So here we have the foundations and substructure. We can do the input of those materials either manually here by typing or clicking in the arrow, or we can also import from um, one of our uh, more than 15 different types of integrations. Then we need to do the input again of quantities, uh, a percentage of recycled and so on. If we import from other sources, we don't have to do the input of all of it. Usually uh, the type of material, the name of material and quantity, uh, also quantity type are already uh, present in the importing. We have then the circularity score and weighting factors that are displayed here, as we mentioned before. This can also be altered if you're working with different um, principles for circularity. And we have the calculation period, which here is 60 years for this project. Then we can have a look at the results. And in the results, we have our graph that we just had a look at. We have also the results that we saw earlier. And we have also here the materials that are a list of materials that I have selected for. Uh, designed for disassembly and uh, adaptability practices. So we have also different types of graphs that can illustrate these results. So we have our basic graphs here and then our uh, advanced graphs. So bubble, Senke diagram, tree map, life cycle stages, and so on. Um, let's go back to our presentation and what other tools can we use with building circularity? We can use the levels tool, which is the one that I used for the project that I just showed. We can use the carbon design in 3D, which is an early stage uh, tool, the life cycle costing tool, LCC, also for BRIAM, as I mentioned before, and also our net zero carbon tool can be used uh, in connection with the building circularity tool. Uh, for this webinar, we have a special offer for existing and new customers. So uh, if you could please reply to the post-webinar survey that will be posted in the chat, uh, we uh, can offer you uh, 30 days uh, free for the building circularity tool. So uh, with this, uh, thank you very much. If you have um, any questions post-webinar, please feel free to contact me and I will pass the word to my fellow speaker, Leonard de Klerk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolina. Now I uh, say, some, say some words uh, about uh, Lena's presentation. But first of all, I will ask my colleague uh, Zsuzsa to share the survey link in, in chat because uh, you shared uh, for only panelists, not all the audience. So thank you very much. So it was uh, very interesting to see uh, the one-click SEA tool uh, live. So I really in, encourage our audience to, to uh, live with the free uh, trial and uh, <clears throat> put your data in it and uh, uh, try what 
had uh, results. And Leonard will show uh, this graph. Uh, you mentioned Carolina in your presentation and you, you presented with real data. And uh, we are very happy that we have Leonard in, in, in Hungary and the Irota Ecology Project who can speak about the real life uh, data. And uh, what is very important, I think, uh, in the life cycle assessment as well, in this context of today, that uh, you reach Leonard the uh, zero overhead costs, meaning running the, the whole uh, holiday venue. And I think it's uh, very important uh, today. So let's hear about your project and the best practice of you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Harriet, for the uh, introduction. Um, I'll start uh, sharing my uh, screen. Um, and yes, indeed, um, you know, uh, what I would like to do in this uh, presentation is uh, show you an, a real life uh, uh, example. Um, and this is all um, because we um, working on, on whole life net zero carbon. And just to to remind everyone on what we're talking about. So we're talking about the, the total uh, carbon emissions over the full life cycle, uh, the whole lifespan of a building. So that's what we call whole life carbon. And that consists of two elements. One is embodied carbon, and embodied carbon is defined of the carbon uh, emissions due to the construction of the building, um, the replacement and refurbishment during use, and at the end of, uh, of the life uh, time, the demolition. Whereas operational uh, carbon is the carbon emitted for using uh, the building as such. So you should think about heating uh, emissions or, or the usage of, uh, of electricity uh, while using the building. Um, other elements, and, and I will talk to you about it um, uh, soon is about biogenic uh, storage, um, <clears throat> uh, exporting energy if you produce more electricity, for example, than you consume. And if you have any carbon emissions remaining, you might uh, offset them uh, through, uh, through uh, projects. Um, but I would like to start with uh, the poll now. Um, because the, the World Green Building Council has set a whole life carbon vision. And that consists of uh, several uh, elements. And um, the, um, you see here three statements, and only two statements are, um, are correct. Uh, one statement is wrong. So I'll read them out. Um, by 2030, new buildings should be net zero for operational carbon. By 2030, existing buildings should be net zero for embodied carbon. And the third one, by 2050, new buildings should be in net zero for whole life carbon. So that's operational plus embodied. So I guess, uh, Zhuja, you've started uh, the poll. Yes, she did. OK. It's running. So I'll, uh, well, Lena, don't you see the, the screen, the result of the poll? Um, I don't see it. Um, but, but I can tell you, maybe. Yeah, if you can, uh, please do. Uh, the second answer got uh, the score of 71%. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first and the third one got 14%. Uh, yeah of the answers okay that's uh, very good because indeed the um uh, the second statement is uh, is incorrect and um, um i'll explain you why because um you know if you want to have uh, net zero embodied carbon you would always be talking about new buildings if a building already exists you cannot um, make it uh, net zero um, as long as it's uh, uh, we're talking about embodied carbon so the first vision, the first statement is really, you know, to, to encourage people to, to be operational uh, uh, net zero carbon by 2030. And then by 2050, 
as actually whole of Europe should be uh, net zero carbon. It also means that all the buildings should be whole life carbon net zero. Um, so going to the uh, to the presentation, um, Irot Ecolodge is an, um, an, a holiday, a small holiday resort uh, in the north of, uh, of Hungary. We are between Miskolc and uh, Kosice in, uh, in the Slovak Republic. And I'm also uh, happy uh, that uh, I've been told that also a lot of people from the Slovak Republic are, uh, are uh, joining, have joined this, uh, this Green Talk, so be welcome. And what we wanted to, to, uh, to achieve when we started this project in 2015, so that's already seven years ago, we wanted to show that for the hospitality industry that luxury and sustainability go well together. Whereas often uh, sustainability is associated with um, you know, simple life, we wanted to show that both elements, luxury and sustainability, perfectly go to, together. It consists of uh, three large uh, villas, 170 square meters uh, each, uh, uh, which can house uh, six uh, persons uh, per, uh, per villa. And it has a shared natural swimming pool, which is uh, the size of six by 16 uh, meter. And we opened in uh, 2016. And when we designed this, um, uh, these three villas, um, we wanted to be as sustainable as possible. And one important element was to make uh, use of reusable or reused building materials as much as possible. Those days, the, the, the word circularity was not very much in vogue. Um, uh, I hadn't heard about it uh, and that those days, but still, um, you know, looking at it now, it comes very close to, to circularity if you are using reused or reusable building materials. Also on the um, sustainable solution, so it has uh, um, PV uh, systems, solar collectors for hot water. Uh, the heating is with biomass, with firewood. We collect uh, rainwater uh, for flushing toilets. Um, and the, the swimming pool itself is, uh, is natural, so we're not using any chemicals here. And what we wanted to achieve is a climate neutral um, operation. And um, that's actually what you can see uh, in here. This, the, these are our operational emissions um, for scope, uh, also better known as scope one and scope two. Um, and here it's important to realize this is not only the building, uh, the holiday resort itself, but it includes the uh, full operation of our business. So you see first Eroto Ecolodge itself, uh, but we also have a utility a building where we're doing the laundry. We're renting out an apartment in, uh, in Budapest uh, as well, the Budapest city apartment. And uh, on the fourth uh, transport item, these are our company cars um, that are uh, using um, uh, fossil fuel. Um, and as of recently, also we have an electric uh, car. Anyway, um, <clears throat> if, you, if you look at the net emissions, they are below zero. So here with, we can claim that we are a an, an carbon neutral uh, operating holiday resort. Um, but actually what we uh, did want to have a look at is indeed what are um, what have been our um, embodied uh, missions when we built uh, Irota Ecolodge. And if we look on the whole life cycle, um, are we still uh, a net zero as well? Um, so with the help of the, the, the one-click uh, LCA software that uh, Carolina just presented, we did a retrospective analysis of um, uh, of the uh, of one villa, um, but as the three villas are very similar, basically you can copy the results from one villa to uh, to the other. And just to give you a little bit of uh, of an idea, <clears throat> here these um, this is a picture of uh, uh, the foundation, and as you can see, uh, we're using uh, uh, reinforced concrete. They're pouring uh, the concrete here at the moment. And as we all know, cement is, a, from a carbon perspective, a, a rather dirty um, building material. Um, but unfortunately, for foundations, uh, there are not many uh, alternative, low carbon uh, alternative available uh, as of today. 
Um, but what we built on top of the foundation is different. And here we, uh, you can see the uh, reused or um, a reusable building material. On the, on the left side, you see the uh, frame, uh, timber frame uh, construction and wood is perfectly uh, able or building material that at the end of the life cycle you can disassemble and use the uh, the, the wooden beams uh, for for other buildings. On the right side you see uh, cellulose, which is a uh, building material made from newspapers, um, impregnated with an, an fire retardant um, retarding um, uh, agent, um, and with these uh, cellulose we insulated the floor, the roof and also uh, all of the walls. Um, so we inserted um, all the uh, materials that we, uh, that we used into, into the software um, because it's an, an, you know, a building that already exists. So we had very specific and very precise quantities of building materials uh, that we used. And we came uh, to, uh, to this result. So here um, you see, <clears throat> The, um, the different life cycle stages um, and the bigger um, a certain square is, the bigger the emissions uh, were or will be. And not surprisingly, um, you see here ready mix, uh, different ready mix, so ready mix that means concrete, uh, ready mix lightweight, ready mix foundations, concrete products, um, but if you add up all the concrete, you see that they are uh, consisting, uh, you know, a, a large share of, um, of the emissions. Also, uh, you see a large uh, square, which is called bricks. This is on the, on the left uh, down uh, square. And actually the, the wording is incorrect. Um, it should have been uh, the roof tiles, but the roof tiles are made of clay and um, and also for me, it was actually a surprise to see uh, uh, that um, roof tiles have such a uh, big uh, uh, impact on the on the carbon uh, uh, carbon emissions. Um, another one uh, to have a look at is rebar. That's um, the steel that we used. Um, normally, steel um, um, has a much bigger impact on the on the uh, on the carbon uh, carbon emissions. But we uh, were able to to get uh, um, the, the the steel from from the Oost um, steel factory, and they are only uh, re using recycling uh, recycled uh, uh, steel, which has a, a relatively uh, low uh, carbon um, relative low carbon emissions. Um, but anyway, I think it's uh, yeah this life cycle uh, assessment really. Um, helped um, to get a better insight um, you know in the building where are the uh, emissions uh, and again not a surprise but um, the largest share um, of the of the emissions are in the uh, in the building materials um, as such um, and here you can see uh, see the result um, the <clears throat> Um, embodied carbon of this building is almost uh, 300 kilo of uh, CO2 equivalent per square meter. And if you benchmark that against uh, average buildings in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, you can see that we are um, in the A category. Um, and that's uh, not so much because of the foundation, because that's fairly standard, but because what we built on top of the foundation is a relatively uh, low carbon. Um, we did have it uh, verified um, by uh, the Hungarian company uh, Greenboss uh, Consulting. So they checked uh, whether the data we uh, supplied uh, was, uh, was correct and was justifiable. Um, unfortunately, um, the um, um, for the building materials that we have used only very few um, environmental uh, product um, documentation uh, was uh, available. So we had to um, uh, do this calculation based on a lot of uh, default uh, default values. 
um, but let's hope that in the future also more um, suppliers of um, of um, building materials are able to to also deliver this uh, this EPDs. Um, so here we see um, here we see uh, the result uh, again um, on uh, the first column. That's the total life cycle impact, which is uh, almost eighty two uh, tons of uh, of CO two. Um, and that's not uh, below zero. Um, however, we have uh, two elements that we did not um, take into account in the in the calculation of the total life cycle impact. Uh, first one is um, is the um, what we call the total life cycle avoided emissions. In our case, that meant um, um, we are um, have a large uh, um, uh, PV system on our on our roof, and we're only using about 45, 50 percent of the generated electricity. And the rain, uh, remaining electricity we deliver to the to the grid. And as a result, um, we are avoiding emissions somewhere else in the Hungarian grid. So less electricity has to be uh, produced uh, by coal or by gas. Um, and as a result, over the full life cycle, we significantly avoid uh, emissions. So that's an, 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 an factor that is, has negative uh, uh, carbon emissions. Um, but in the third column, you see the so-called biogenic carbon storage. And biogenic carbon storage means um, that the building materials that you've been using, and in our case, that's timber and, uh, and cellulose, um, is based on <clears throat> uh, natural building materials, um, based on trees that uh, were growing. And while the trees were growing, they were taking... CO2 out of the atmosphere and stored it uh, in the woods. And by using um, a lot of biogenic um, building materials, we in, 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 this, uh, in this villa have also stored a lot of carbon. And I must say to also to my uh, own surprise, this was quite uh, a big amount in terms of uh, CO2. And if you, um, as a result, add all the three columns up, you get to the net emissions, and these are uh, below zero. So we were uh, actually very happy and proud that uh, Irota Ecolodge is not only a net zero operational um, uh, company, but a company or an, an object um, that is uh, a net zero uh, carbon over the full life cycle. So as you've seen, uh, the uh, Green Builder Council has set a an, an vision to, to reach this uh, aim in 2050. Um, but we, and I, I must admit, uh, not knowing, but we reached uh, this, uh, this milestone already in uh, 2016 when we delivered uh, the three holiday homes. Now, um, it's not for, uh, it, there is a reason why this biogenic carbon storage is set separately, because um, um, there is still, it's still a bit up in the air um, in the regulatory world. Are you allowed to uh, subtract the biogenic carbon storage for your, from your total life cycle impacts? And the reason is, is um, what will happen with all the building materials at the end of the life cycle. Because if you, for example, would uh, <clears throat> um, incinerate all the wood, uh, the biogenic uh, building materials, then basically the carbon comes back into the atmosphere. And, uh, and, and that's, of course, a situation uh, that, we, uh, that we don't want. Um, so, um, and that's also why um, uh, Carolina also focused on the circularity, because an, 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 a crucial element and a learning point in this life cycle assessment is, is that if you use biogenic uh, building materials, you should make sure that you can uh, disassemble the building 
um, and reuse the uh, building materials for new uh, buildings. If you don't, then you should not be allowed to uh, subtract the biogenic uh, uh, carbon storage from your uh, total life cycle impacts. And here is um, uh, the, the building circularity um, for, for our building. Um, as you can see the, uh, on the material covered, so the, uh, uh, the virgin material is fairly high um, because the, as Carolina explained, the metrics is weight-based. So um, the concrete and, and steel is relatively uh, heavy compared to, uh, for example, timber and cellulose. So uh, that's why this uh, number of virgin materials is, is, is fairly, uh, fairly high and the renewable and recycled one um, fairly low. And also, if you, if you <clears throat> look to the uh, materials returned, you see also a relatively high percentage of disposal and downcycling. Um, again, for the same reason, um, concrete, um, is, uh, is is fairly difficult to to uh, to recycle or to to reuse in a circular economy. Anyway, um, the number looks small, twenty four percent, but um, Caroline uh, told me that within this uh, metrics, actually, it's a fairly a fairly high number. But I hope maybe that she can uh, confirm that uh, uh, later as well. Um, so I have. Um, um, at the end of my presentation, basically four takeaways. So if you want to reach uh, net zero whole life carbon, I think you should focus on the four following points. Um, foundations, as you can, um, you cannot avoid cement and steel, but at least if you use steel, make sure it's recycled steel. And if you use cement, try to, to find the most, the low carbon uh, type as possible. Uh, nowadays, um, more more low carbon cement is uh, is is coming is becoming available on the market. Everything above uh, the foundation, everything above ground, use bio based building materials as uh, as much as possible. And thirdly, um, important element is that you design for this assembly. So make sure that the building you are designing can be disassembled at the end of uh, of the uh, life uh, end of life so that particularly the bio-based building materials you can uh, reuse for for other buildings um, if you um, do this um, and you still have remaining carbon that you you need to compensate uh, rather uh, have an, an oversized uh, um, photovoltaic uh, uh, system and try to avoid offsets. Uh, offsets is, for example, planting uh, trees um, somewhere somewhere else to, to, uh, um, uh, to sequestrate uh, carbon. But uh, if you can avoid this kind of offsetting, uh, do it through an oversized uh, um, PV system. Then last but not least, indeed, as Harriet already mentioned, um, we um, um, had a look at our uh, annual uh, utility costs with the, uh, the energy crisis uh, unfolding. And um, uh, because the um, electricity price uh, went up uh, uh, with, well, here at least with 50%, we are a net uh, producer of electricity so our income for for the sale of electricity went up significantly uh, almost to 300,000 forints uh, on an annual basis um, our heating cost which is uh, firewood is uh, is uh, 95,000 forint um, we have some costs for cooking which is still on butane uh, bottles um, and we have, of course, uh, we're taking uh, drinking uh, water, which is 135,000 uh, forints. But if you look at the total, it's, uh, it became negative. So basically, the electricity is now paying for our other uh, utility costs. And uh, we are uh, fairly unique in this uh, sense because of a lot of hotels uh, in, the, in, in Hungary. And uh, I guess uh, this, the situation is similar in the Slovak Republic. 
uh, will close uh, during winter because they simply cannot uh, afford the uh, the heating uh, the heating bills. Um, but also, if we hadn't um, had any solar systems, if we didn't use biomass but would be heating with natural gas, if we didn't collect uh, rainwater for flushing the toilets, our utility uh, annual utility bill would be uh, a million forint. Um, that's two thousand five hundred euros approximately. Um, and even if if we uh, and this is for a well insulated building, if the building would not be well insulated then probably we would have been in the same situation that we had to uh, had to close for uh, for uh, winter. So uh, this brings me uh, to the end of my uh, presentation. Um, there are some some previous um, um, uh, webinars on, on carbon footprinting, electrical driving. Um, also through the Green Building Council, we did a green walk, so you can also walk uh, through the uh, the different buildings and, uh, and have a look at the pool and um, the carbon footprint report which i showed you on the first slide uh, can also be downloaded from uh, from our website so thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention and i give the word back to uh, to Harriet. thank you very much Lena, for your presentation and for carolina as well Okay, you stopped sharing your screen. And now this is time for questions and uh, uh, comments, if you have any questions. So uh, we received the questions in the Q&A uh, window and uh, Carolina answered it uh, in typing the answer in the, in the window. But maybe it's uh, worse to uh, have or answer the question live maybe. Uh, so the question was that, what is the average office building embodied carbon level in Europe? And uh, Carolina, can you please uh, answer it live? Yes, uh, so I actually got the data from Hungary um, and um, the data in the last, in the third quarter of 2021, according to our benchmark, it would uh, range from the A grade uh, to those below 250 kilos of carbon per meter to the G grade, uh, those that have uh, over 700 kilos of um, CO2 per square meter. Okay, thank you very much. We uh, got another question uh, in the Q&A window, and uh, it is about uh, the impact of the solar panel production and transport here in Hungary. So the question is how green the solar panels are. So this is a good question. I don't know uh, who uh, would like to answer this question. Um, I can give it a try. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. Um, of course, um, you know, um, with the production of, uh, of of panels and the transport, you you do have carbon emissions. Um, I don't have uh, numbers um, on 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 the top of my head on, but of course your your solar panels they have a, a lifetime. Normally they guarantee it for for twenty five years, but in practice uh, they will be able to work longer. So definitely they um, you know will have to work some time to. Um, compensate the, uh, the production emissions, but at some point they really become fully green um, and uh, you know deliver carbon-free uh, uh, electricity. Um, and actually, in if I'm correct, also in the in the software, the um, green electricity is not zero carbon, but it also reflects. Um, the uh, emissions that were, um, you know, produced when the, the the panels were made. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, we have a question uh, live from Gabor Sarvas, and uh, I try to allow to talk, Gabor. I ask you um, unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I actually want to just make a, a, a remark rather. Um, obviously, I represent uh, Greenboards, which was mentioned by uh, Leonard as the uh, company who was uh, helping to 
review the um, the calculations. And I'm I must uh, really say that uh, um, we were really honored to to be able to contribute this project because um, I mean we believe it's truly an exemplary uh, um, uh, construction project in 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 Hungary, um, and it's so so it was really a pioneering approach to to the whole. Um, uh, um, set up so from from the design through the construction um, and uh, yeah including the, the the circularity concept which was yes as as um, Leonard mentioned wasn't even sort of so um, well known at that time but essentially if you want to focus a, a whole life carbon neutrality then then this is this is absolutely necessary. And, and another um, uh, important aspect is also it was highlighted that uh, so this project was you know achieving this neutrality without any offsite compensation so 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 offsetting is is obviously a, a possibility for everyone but then um, um, I mean if you can and this was an example where within the boundaries of the project uh, this uh, uh, neutrality could, could have been achieved. So, so this was very much, um, you know, um, an, an honor for us to be to be able to work on this um, uh, project, uh, because we also believe that this is, um, you know, really the 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 uh, the next uh, focus um, for for the whole building industry. So we are, of course, today with the middle of the, in the middle of the energy crisis. Uh, very much concerned of um, um, you know operating uh, energy and operating uh, uh, um, uh, um, operation related um, uh, emissions, but uh, the the embodied carbon um, so 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 all the carbon which is linked to the um, um, uh, building uh, materials and the construction itself. I mean, this is something which we we should not forget, and this is also something with the World Green Building Council um, is clearly um, um, you know raising more and more awareness of. So, um, um, as it was also mentioned, this is something for for every um, uh, developer to to to, to consider, um, and not you know in the long time future, but but actually should be doing it today so so when um, um, yeah we were approached uh, by by Leonard and and you know he did not mention uh, I, I trust uh, because um, it's um, uh, well not yet public of course that um, uh, the, the project is hoping to become a, a case study not only in in our green talk but uh, Ideally, in the World Green Building Council uh, uh, library as well. So, um, and in order to become, you know, um, a case study there, uh, it was um, a requirement to to have an independent review undertaken. So that was um, essentially a, a, an important trigger for for um, for having us also involved and in, and in doing this um, uh, review. Uh, and I, I really, really, really hope that this is, um, you know, going to happen. That this case study will be also selected um, on, on this global um, uh, library. Um, uh, so we were just, um, yeah, again to say that um, uh, how, how happy we were to be uh, contributing. And um, and I mean, not too important, but I wanted to mention that it, yeah, we did this on a pro bono basis because we really believe it's an exemplary. Um, um, uh, project, and um, and I just really hope that more developers will follow suit. So thanks again uh, for 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 the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Gabor, for uh, your comments uh, and the extra information you shared with us. Uh, we have uh, two comments uh, in the Q and A uh, window. Uh, both of them is about PV uh, panels. Uh, one of uh, uh, one expert says that uh, he he read that typically the carbon cost of panel production is paid back in one year of operation. So I don't know. Would you like to comment on this? Someone. Mm -hmm. No, thanks for, for looking it up quickly on, on the internet. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just want to say that from what I have seen, it's uh, about that one to two years, depending of uh, the manufacturer of materials and transport as well. Yeah. Yeah, and there is another question. Maybe uh, you are not the uh, not not the person who should know the answer mm -hmm. uh, on it, but uh, there is a question that uh, a new regulation in Hungary uh, don't support PV grid export anymore. So avoided emissions by PV surplus for reaching net zero carbon has big obstacles today. So what do you think about this? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's true. It's a, it's a, a temporary measure um, by the Hungarian government for new uh, projects, for new PV systems. So for example, in our case, it, this new uh, this restriction does not apply. Um, they mentioned the, the reason is that the grid simply cannot handle all the um, um, electricity uh, um, supply to, uh, to to the grid. Um, again, it's a temporary measure. Um, I hope that um, the Hungarian government, uh, you know, uh, will start investing in, in, in grid uh, capacity. Uh, um, like, uh, I think Hungary is not unique in that. Um, I mean, I know, for example, in the Netherlands, there are also really some. Uh, um uh, issues uh, to to get uh, pv systems connected to to, uh, to the grid um of course uh, you know politics come in so the hungarian government says we only can do it once uh, brussels starts uh, paying uh, us again but uh, i think they shouldn't wait for that Okay, thank you very much for your for your answer and uh, there's a question uh, to to carolina um what is your experience with your clients when they do a uh, life cycle assessment? Uh, what do uh, what uh, should they uh, pay attention to when they assess uh, their building for circularity? What are the typical uh, challenges? What are learning points after the assessment? So this kind of questions raised. Yeah, so uh, the typical challenges, I think they are mostly uh, some that Leonard or, uh, mentioned also. For example, the types of materials, are they um, biogenic materials or not? Do they have uh, very high emissions or like he, he called the concrete like a dirty material? So um, I would say the, the most challenges are uh, choosing the correct uh, materials that um, will uh, actually work in a way for uh, building uh, circularity. So I would say the, the choice of the materials. Also, uh, transportation, for example, is something that really needs to be taken into consideration and uh, the end of life process as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, and if I can add, I mean, yeah, of um, course. Um, yeah, that's why I think it's a very good tool because it really makes it visible. and. Um, like I mentioned with the roof tiles, if I had not known that time that uh, clay roof tiles are so carbon intensive, I probably would have looked for for alternatives. And um, yeah, of course, this this uh, software, like uh, Carolina correctly mentioned, you should use it as soon as possible because the earlier you use it in the in the designing phase, the easier it is to uh, to uh, reduce your carbon uh, footprint. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, there is a, a question uh, regarding the, the water uh, recycling and water treatment. I don't know, are you ex ex uh, experts in it or not? But the question is that, uh, are there any good points for water recycling and treatment in factories or other buildings? Well, you know, uh, water recycling is always good because you, you simply, uh, you know, reduce the uh, uh, water consumption this way we've all seen uh, uh, this year now what um, climate change means in practice and it also uh, uh, you know has an impact on uh, on water supply it was a very dry uh, dry summer uh, in uh, in europe um yeah i cannot talk specifically about factories but um, um we are um, uh, through this uh, rainwater usage uh, uh, collection we save about 45 percent on on tap water so um, mm -hmm. instead of uh, the tap water we're using 
uh, the, the rainwater. It's actually not, it's, it's the flushing of the toilets, but, um, but the biggest savings is in the laundry. Um, because as you can imagine, uh, you know, people sleep for two, three nights in a, in a bed and you have to, to, to wash it, uh, the bed linen. Um, and that's significant amount of, uh, of water you use. And that's 100% on rainwater. And on top of that, um, we use much less uh, detergent because the rainwater is very soft. And if the water is soft, you only need a third of the amount of detergent than if you use uh, tap water. So another mm -hmm. way of saving. Okay, thank you very much. And we have time for uh, one last question and uh, maybe it's quite important, the return on investment on your project, Lennart. Can you tell some words about it? Well, the the um, the project um, um, is about 30, 35 percent. Uh, the the investment was 30 to 35 percent uh, bigger than uh, than a standard uh, holiday resort, a standard uh, building. Um, you know, return of on investment is difficult to say because it's a building, so it's not like that you you get uh, your investment back in ten years because you know a building still remains uh, has a value. We designed it also in such a way that you can even use it as a regular uh, home just for for uh, for living um so we we um we didn't do that calculation however now seeing the energy prices then probably we would have been wrong uh, because the uh, payback time goes back uh, dramatically because of the uh, the energy saving yeah, circumstances count. Yes, it's difficult. Nobody could yeah. have uh, predicted this, I guess. Yes. So thank you very much for your presentations. There is one more question live. I, I give you word, Paul, in a minute. But uh, I would like to tell that uh, I uh, for, forgot to, to tell you that the links uh, that um, Leonard put on the last uh, slide of his presentation will be shared with you after in a follow up uh, email because we don't share the, the presentations themselves, uh, the materials, but we uh, share the, the uh, recorded uh, video and uh, we will send you uh, the follow up follow-up email. So I give you a uh, word, Paul, in a minute. Just a moment. Okay. Just unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Fine. Hi, hi, both of you, Leonard, old friend, uh, Carolina. Nice to, mm -hmm. nice to meet you. It was nice presentation. Uh, I just wanted to draw the attention. I mean, obviously, uh, Leonard and his project has been part of our, our, our Hungarian operation for some times because uh, it was from the very beginning there was an intention uh, without using this fancy word of carbon neutral life cycle, so and so forth, uh, of making. Uh, uh, a low sustainability footprint or a low sustainable impact project. And, and, uh, and I, I think that the, the history of this uh, um, uh, the development represents the intention of, of the developer or the people who were associated with it is to, is to design this nature, as we say. And uh, uh, Retesting the project into this more rigorous uh, uh, assessment system uh, should itself, uh, uh, how should I put it, should itself uh, give us some idea of uh, how far when we face the market, when we face clients, when we face uh, our own work, uh, we should rely on our own intuitive. Uh, and common knowledge, uh, sustainability principles, and how far it will require such a rigorous testing as the uh, one click is proposing. Um, because from the, you know, just from the presentation, one would, one would feel that it's, uh, it's not robust enough. I mean, essentially, 
the outcome is very robust, it's very visible, very good graphics, but uh, uh, getting all this uh, information, and especially as you mentioned that many of the traders, many of the building materials are not listing the, the carbon content at the moment. So we need to find a, a kind of learning experience of how far uh, uh, a design and development, which essentially takes on the aspiration of remain sustainable, sustainable uh, uh, is a sufficient base uh, uh, to move forward rather than to wait for this extremely rigorous uh, calculation. And I, I didn't catch, there was a remark from uh, Leonard whether the, when the project was run through the, um, through your system, Caroline, that you had difficulty of actually finding numbers uh, even in a post evolution stage. So that's the kind of question I would like both of you to answer of how, what, what's the practical way of going about it? Um, well, just referring, uh, indeed, I mean, for some major building materials like the the, uh, the cellulose, for example, we 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 it got we got it from Germany, and there they they had it. Um, um, on the concrete, for example, yeah, that comes from that came from a local, uh, you know, the nearby concrete factory, and of course, it doesn't make sense to transport concrete over long distances, so. We simply took the concrete that was uh, close by, and they probably have never heard about uh, uh, an EPD. Um, on the other hand, I don't think yes, this is very rigorous this uh, this this calculation. But even if you just simply use default values, um, you already get the insight, in my view, that you need to adjust your design in such a way that your carbon emissions go down. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, we don't have to look behind uh, the dots, you know, it's, 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 it's just to get a feeling on where your emissions are. And even like for me as a, you know, I'm in this carbon business for a long time. I learned a lot just by, by simply inputting some basic uh, data into, into the software. Um, but of course, it's um, like you said, yes, it's our intention to maximize on sustainability. Um, you would expect, I mean, that other designers would have that same intention if they just want to optimize the software to get the required results without the proper intention. Yeah, with any system, with any um so where you can you can of course uh, play around a bit trick around i would even say just yeah. to add on that also i think that you are also um, asking about data availability and um in our software we do have the epds the environmental product declarations but for example for the case of um not having enough epds for a certain location because it's not always that all the manufacturers are going to issue epds on all of their materials, then we do have uh, generic materials that can be used or uh, materials from neighboring countries that can be also used with the localizing factor, which is basically um, substituting the electricity profile so that we can use the material as if the material has been produced locally. So this is a solution also for uh, this. And uh, also, as Leonard was mentioning about playing around, you can also do it in the early stage uh, of the project. For example, when you have only um, very little information, like the area of the, the project, uh, how many floors it will have. So uh, we have a tool, the Carbon Design and 3D, that you can do the input of this information. And then it's going to uh, generate some uh, very much uh, simple building, like a shoe, uh, shoe box shape. And uh, um, then you can have an idea of uh, uh, building that size with that area. How uh, how how much uh, would you have in terms of uh, emissions? Uh, also based on the materials type of frame that you would choose. 
Uh, this is something that has also been very much used in universities that have been working with OnClick LCA to uh, work uh, together with building circularity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answers. And I think that uh, the EPD, the Environmental uh, Product Declaration, can be a topic on another green talk. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of our members uh, just wrote an article in Magyar Építés Technika. This is a Hungarian uh, um, professional uh, magazine about EPDs and the, the whole life carbon uh, itself. So you can read this article as well. So thank you very much uh, for your presentations of today and the questions. And uh, I think it was uh, now a, a nice uh, discussion uh, among uh, the participants as well, because the topic is very important. So thank you very much uh, to be uh, that you uh, were with us. And uh, let me invite you to the next uh, event as well, our last uh, green talk uh, during the year. It will be in the end of November, the 23rd of November at 3 p.m. And we will speak about the energy refurbishment of existing buildings. So in another quite uh, interesting uh, topics. And we will share best practices from QGPC members at Science Park offices. So I encourage you to join us. And uh, for now, I uh, really thank you very much for your attention and have a nice rest of the day, all of you. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>